My sisters and brothers, good morning. And I'd like to say happy Veterans Day. On behalf of Bishop Marianne Edgar Buddy, the Bishop of Washington, and Dean Randy, who is the Dean of this cathedral, I would like to uh, I I invite you to worship with us this morning on this Veterans Day. This is a very unusual time for all of us, but we are very grateful that, that the Washington National Cathedral is able to make this offering to the Lord on behalf of all of those who serve our great nation. So we invite you, wherever you are in the world, to join us in this worship and in prayer and thanksgiving for our veterans, both those who have served and are no longer with us and those who are currently serving. We thank God for them all, and it is our pleasure to have this worship service on their behalf. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness you rule the peoples. And guide all the nations upon earth. Please stand. Whereas it has long been our custom to commemorate November 11th, the anniversary of the ending of World War I, by paying tribute to the heroes of that tragic struggle and by rededicating ourselves to the cause of peace. And whereas in the intervening years, the United States has been involved in two other great military conflicts, which have added millions of veterans living and dead to the honor rolls of this nation. Whereas the Congress passed a concurrent resolution on June 4, 1926, calling for the observance of November 11 with appropriate ceremonies and later provided in an act approved May 13, 1938, that the 11th of November should be a legal holiday and should be known as Armistice Day. And whereas in order to expand the significance of the commemoration and in order that a grateful nation might pay appropriate homage to the veterans of all its wars who have, had, who have contributed so much to the preservation of this nation, the Congress, by an act approved June 1, 1954, changed the name of the holiday to Veterans Day. On that day, let us solemnly remember the sacrifices of all those who fought so valiantly on the seas, in the air, and on foreign shores to preserve our heritage of freedom and let us reconsecrate ourselves to the task of promoting an enduring peace so that our efforts shall not have been in vain. Let us pray. O oh, judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Micah. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, 
and that we, walk, that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation Neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Let us pray Psalms 46, responsively by whole verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help to trouble, in trouble. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the bravery of the day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war cease in all the world. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shield with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Thank you once again for joining us in our Veterans Day prayer service. To all our veterans join, joining us in prayer this morning, let me say thank you. We humbly acknowledge the sacrifices you and your families have made, and so once again, please know of our gratitude. Other than my amazing parents, there were only a few adults that captured my childhood attention. And at the top of my list was a veteran who we all called Uncle Wilb. 
Uncle Wilb was a kind and gentle soul. He enjoyed a Bud Light once in a while and always had a great joke to tell. He loved his God. He loved his family. He loved his country. And he also loved the smell of a new Buick. I remember my Uncle Wilb. I remember him being different in a good and, and curious kind of way. His words, and even more so his silence, set him apart. It became clear to me that World War II changed him. Indicative of the greatest generation, he carried a quiet confidence and a soft smile everywhere he went. And there was something sacred about being with Uncle Will. Like the time he gave me his precious sailor's cap, the very cap he carried and wore aboard his landing ship. I wore that cap everywhere. Years later, he gave me a peek into his soul as he lovingly described to me what, was, what it was like to hold his wife of 50 years as she passed from this life into the next. I believe that war made my Uncle Will a courageous friend of all that is sacred. My Uncle Will and heroes like him knew how to lead others into what Celtic Christians call the thin places. You see, thin places are those moments when the line between what is visible and invisible nearly vanishes. Thin places yield holy moments, and no demographic is better at thin places than veterans of war. Since our nation's birth, 43 million Americans have served in war. 660,000 have been killed in battle, and 2 million more have been wounded. And the invisible wounds of war plague most of America's veterans. The prophet Isaiah was well acquainted with war. He knew all too well war's debilitating darkness. But he also knew, as did my uncle, that in God's economy, darkness does not get the last word. The prophet tells us that those who have walked in darkness will see a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light will dawn. And so to our nation's 26 million veterans, thank you for walking into the darkest places in defense of freedom. May the thin places my uncle knew, the light and peace the prophets proclaimed, be yours as well. And may none of us rest until all the people of this land share in the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray a litany for veterans. For all who have served in the armed forces to ensure our freedom, we honor you. For the families who kept the home fires burning and provided continuous support for their soldiers, we thank you. For the wounds you have suffered at the hands of war, for the times of loneliness you have felt on the battlefields of life, for the sacrifices you have made, for the times you were not thanked, for the times you chose courage in the face of fear, for the times you were not shown compassion, for the difficult decisions you had to make, for the losses you have suffered. We thank you now. We honor you now. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. Our recognition of war would be incomplete without honoring the loss and sacrifice of those who gave their lives in service to their country. The fallen are on their fellow soldiers' hearts and minds, and on our hearts and minds as well. Let us pause for a moment in silence in memory of those who did not return. ever-living God. We remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bringing justice to all peoples and establish harmony among the nations through Jesus Christ our Lord.
almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us be mindful of the sacrifices they have made, the hardship endured by their families and friends, so that we may never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Hear us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose providence guides your people in diligent service, bless the armed forces of the United States of America and all who serve therein as they perform the duties of their calling. Give them not only true love of country, but also love of you and an understanding of your love for all peoples so that relying upon your guidance, they may courageously defend our nation from every foe, promote justice, honor, and unity among our people, and be a means of fostering mutual respect and understanding among all the peoples of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you this Veterans Day and always. Amen.